So what you want to do is keep track of dimensions. Keep track of your units as you're solving a problem. This will save you. You know, the previous example showed you uh, one place where if you didn't keep track of the units, you could really mess up. Changing the units from one form to the other, keeping track of that turns out to be very important. You can do another example. Let's say that you have an object right here, okay, and you're dropping it and it hits the ground. Okay, and you want to know how far it fell. Okay, and so for example, let's say you're dropping, you know, a rock into, you know, a hole and you're timing how long it takes to fall and hit, hit the bottom. Okay, and so you want to know how deep is the hole. And so you drop it and you know the time that it takes to fall was 1.21 seconds. So you were able to measure that very, very accurately. And you're trying to remember uh, how far it fell. And so there's an equation that sticks in your head. The distance is one half g times t. Now g gravity is going to be equal to 9.81 meter per second squared. So if you multiply this out, x equals one half times 9.81 meter per second squared times 1.21 seconds, the answer is well, you just multiply this out, you know, 1 half times 9.81 times 1.21, and the answer comes out to be 5.94. Oh, wait, something's wrong. You can write meter, but is that right? Because look at your units. You have meter per second squared times second. So that cancels one of those. This, this is meter per second. That is not a unit of distance. So that means this is wrong. If the units do not work out, it's wrong. Simply writing the right unit doesn't make the answer right. And so it's still wrong. Okay. So that means this, this, this is exactly what you had up here. So that means that you remembered the equation wrong. Again, on a test, you're trying to solve something, you remembered the equation wrong. You get the wrong answer. If the units don't work out, it's definitely wrong. A 100% chance that it's wrong. Now, if the units work out, there's actually a really good chance you did the problem right, and it is correct. If the units don't work, it didn't work. So, so you know, if if, you, if the units work out, after you do a whole bunch of algebra, a whole bunch of math, if the units work out, you uh, uh, you probably got the answer right. Okay. If the units don't work, there's a hundred percent chance the problem is wrong. Fix it. So you say, what would fix this? Well, with meter over second squared, you need to multiply by second squared. Well, you don't just you have to square that term. So that means that should have been t squared right there. Okay. So that means that this is now 7.18 meters. Okay. So we solved the problem. You thought you knew what the answer was. You thought you knew what the equation was but you remembered it wrong because you kept track of the units here in this step. You saw the units did not work out the way you originally had it, and so you knew the final answer was wrong. This is why, this is why it is so important, because I see students do this all the time. They don't write down the units in there, and if you don't write down the units, then, then you would look at that and say, oh, okay, so I multiply 1 half times 9.81 times, uh, uh, times the, the 1.21, and I get 5.94, and they just stick the right unit in there. This is wrong. That you, you don't get points for, being, for it being close, okay, and, you know, an engineer. 
you get an aeronautical engineer that builds an airplane that's almost able to land or almost able to take off. That's not a very good engineer. You have a civil engineer that builds a bridge that's almost able to safely hold traffic. That's not good enough. You have a physician, a surgeon, that almost saves the patient. Almost is not good enough. To catch a mistake, put the units in, actually take the extra step to multiply out the unit if the units work you probably did it right. If the units don't work, you did it wrong. So this is a very powerful tool. If you take the extra few seconds, yeah, I, I know, there's a lot of homework, there's a lot of things you have to do, it's, you're very busy, Take the extra few seconds and you will catch a mistake. That is so important and so helpful. Okay, so this is dimensions. This is dimensional analysis, keeping track of dimensions, keeping track of dimensional analysis at every step of a problem will save you enormous heartache later on. And again, don't, uh, uh, what we're trying to do here in this class is teach you the tools that you're going to need when you get into the workplace. Uh, uh, people that don't do this make mistakes. If they don't catch the mistakes, things go wrong. An engineer that builds a, 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 a vehicle or designs a bridge or a building or a machine that doesn't work right. If people are using this thing that they design and it doesn't work right, people can die. You cannot afford to make a mistake in the real world. And so that's why we stress you need to keep track of the units, keep track of the dimensions, make sure it works. That's what we're trying to do in this class. The reason you have to take physics before you go on to other courses in science and engineering is this discipline for learning how to do this sort of thing. Okay, so with this, that kind of concludes our, our set of lectures for chapter one of the textbook. Um, so you know what you need to know now in order to do the homework. Get to work on doing the homework for chapter one. I'll be starting talking about chapter two. Uh, chapter two is a much bigger, much more in-depth, much more comprehensive chapter. <clears throat> it's going to be a whole lot more work. We start doing physics there. Chapter one is the background material. So good luck. Start doing the homework. And we'll start doing chapter two shortly after this.